Hey everybody here at Minds Fest and I'm joined today by Destiny. Thank right. you for taking some time. Thank you for having Great me. Great debate that you had up there today. I love seeing liberals and conservatives or leftists and conservatives getting together and debating the issues. And I, I you do that a lot on your show, on your channel, right? Like yeah, you I have a lot to, of guests I, on. Yeah. Why do you think that's so important? Um, I think that if you only talk to people that you agree with, you can kind of demonize the other side, and you don't have to spend any time making your views like understandable to somebody else. So when you have a conversation or a debate with somebody that you disagree with, you're forced to like understand their perspective and like make your perspective understandable to them to have a good conversation. Yeah. Right, and like actually treat them like they're another human being. Ideally, yeah. That's one of the things that I think is so disappointing in today's rhetoric is. It's like, we can't just disagree. It means that you're evil and you're terrible. And it can't just be like that we had different life experiences that led us to different conclusions. Yeah. And so why do you think, like, do you think that it's always been that way? Or do you think that it's gotten worse? Uh, I think it's gotten worse because I think that we have a unique way right now to filter people out of our lives that we didn't have before. So yes. like online, we can hyper select for groups of people that we identify with. Whereas generally, um, if you throw yourself in a group full of people, you're going to get along with everybody. Like when you go to school, like everybody kind of makes friends just because you happen to be near each other. But right. online, we can censor, or not censor, but we can filter way too aggressively, I think. Yeah, that is really true. Okay. Now, you, one of the things that I've always found really fascinating, particularly about like YouTube and the online community, is a lot of times it feels like like followers or fans are like really invested in you as a creator or you know whomever uh, fill in the blank have you found that when you go out into the world and you're interacting with people talking do they like treat you like they know you sometimes yeah they recognize me yeah but I yeah. feel like I've been streaming for 15 years so at this point I'm basically used to it so yeah yeah I, it's kind of flattering yeah yeah was it weird at first yeah, a little bit at first, but like yeah. I said, it's been like oh, a decade and a half now, so I'm pretty used to it, yeah. Yeah, and is it hard when, like, because I know, for example, Benjamin and I have gone through our marital troubles in the past, we've had problems, Is do you think it's harder going through that stuff in public than it is for normal people? Yeah, of course, any problem you have is going to be amplified like crazy, whether it's relationship issues, are you, uh, live interview. Live video. <laughs> live video, or not, not live, but it's video recorded, so yeah. yeah. We're doing an interview about a political debate thing that just happened in this theater right yeah, now. Yeah, it's called Minds Fest. Minds Fest. People it's a shouting at each debate. other about politics. Basically, the worst fucking shit you can ever. Yeah, yeah basically. Sure. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. They're together. I'm being That's interviewed. That's my husband. <laughs> You're being interviewed. Yeah. Yes. That's your husband. That's my husband. He's famous, so That's I'm interviewing a bit, him. Right, a little bit. Where are you from? Uh, right now, I live in Miami. <laughs> but you want to go back to Miami? Me and you. You don't like Austin? I don't like Texas. You don't Welcome like Texas? to I like Texas Miami, Miami, Miami. Oh, well, shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, good luck escaping. <laughs> Hello, this is Temple. Big money tenors. Get y'all some money, man. We're going to fuck with y'all. Welcome okay. to Texas, by yeah, the way. Right. Um, so, yeah. what would you say if... Um, uh, if you were talking to anybody who was interested in getting into like streaming, YouTube, anything like that, what would be one piece of advice that you would tell them? Um, the most important thing for starting, I think any type of like business thing period, is you have to find something that you're like really passionate about, yeah. you really enjoy, and then you have to make sure that people want that particular thing or find a way to market that particular thing. In business, it's a bit easier because you can go more broad, but in entertainment, it's pretty specific. Yeah. Like you have to have an affinity for, you know, I don't want to say being funny, but like having presence on camera Nothing. and like, yeah, being entertaining. And yeah, I should be able to ask somebody that's trying to be like a blossoming content creator, like, oh, why should somebody watch you over anybody else? Yeah. And if they're like, well, I don't know. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, yeah. that's what everybody's going to think when they watch your channel. So yeah, have something that makes you stick out that people really want to watch you for. Well, and I love that you're talking about business because I think a lot of times people see what you do and they think that you're just out there being like, hey, I'm making videos and here I am. And it, it's not like that. You have to understand how the business work, how, how the social media platforms work, how to interact with those things, what is going to go viral and things like that. So what would you say, like, 
as a as a pretty prolific content creator, how much time do you spend actually like making the content versus the business side of things? It really depends on the day and what's going on. So like today was a really light content day. Technically, I only filmed for an hour, um, and I'm talking to fans and doing interviews. But like, I probably work like 14 to 16 hours a day because I'm streaming for eight hours a day, and then I'm researching, reading, email, setting up interviews, yep. setting up flights, setting up uh, whatever podcast. It's just it's like a ton of stuff. But I, I love what I do for work, so it doesn't really feel like work, right? Well, so, like, exactly. Yeah. But that's the key, isn't it? So it's not. If you're really really lucky. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't like casual. You can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna do some stuff. So I appreciate you being. Being, a, being willing to share that kind of stuff. Um, and now, what would you say last, um, of all of the things, of all of the crazy topics in the news today, whether it's um, immigration or, or you know, uh, the, the election, um, I don't know, whatever. What would you, what is your big thing right now? What are you the most passionate about? Uh, right now we have a really big problem to where we live in different factual realities from each other that has been accelerated by the online stuff. And yeah. if that doesn't get solved, then nothing matters. Literally yeah. every other issue doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the very frustrating thing is I think that Americans probably align on like 95% or more values issues. So like if you go to the southern border, like I don't think anybody really wants an insecure fucking border. I don't think anybody really wants illegal immigrants pouring into the country. But yeah. it's a matter of like, what do you believe is actually happening? And yeah. for some people, they believe it's not a big problem. For other people, they think it's like a, a, a an existential threat to the U.S., but yeah. the difference isn't one of values. The difference is just one of like, well, what's actually happening? What's what, the facts? And what do we do? I remember, I, I think it was like two years ago, Jimmy Dore went on Tucker Carlson's show, and I remember watching that interview and them agreeing, like you said, on 90% of the stuff, and then it was just a disagreement on like who's responsible and what to do about it. And I said, you know what? If these two guys that are like polar opposite that you would imagine, can sit there and get along, then the rest of us should be able to do it too. If, yeah, if you can find those factual agreements, but I mean, that's where the hard work is. Like, we're all humans. We all share roughly the same values. Nobody's really that special when it comes to value stuff. You can take the most fucking Sharia law Muslim, the most crazy person in whatever, Asia, the craziest person in Europe, Africa, South America, North, and put them all together. And roughly, we all kind of want to have families and be able to work and like, educate our children and like alone kind of like make it and get yeah. by but the hard part is like coming together on those factual grounds on even something as seemingly simple as was our last election secure or what does a vaccination do or is covid from a bioweapons lab or from a flea market or from a whatever like having disagreements factually in every single arena means the value sharing really doesn't matter yeah well and the when they shut those opportunities to talk about that stuff down i think that's what makes it worse because then the conspiracy theories start to take on even more life and even more energy because, well, how dare you talk about it? And oh, if they say no, then it must be really fun. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that almost, like, lack of free speech makes that worse. Yeah, it can. Yeah. I, I'm glad. I think that companies started to realize that, like, in 2021, because yeah. they had been, um, they were, like, shutting down a lot of conversations, and then they changed to more, like, note systems, which I think was healthier than just, like, banning people, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so what would you say, um, if the big thing is we need to come together and realize that we actually all get along, what do you think we should do about it? What should we do about it? <laughs> I, I don't fuck, I don't know at this point. I'm not sure. Having like fact-based conversations with people where you can like agree on sources of authority is really, really, really important. Yeah. Um, if I knew how to do that, I would just be a trillionaire because I would have <laughs> united the whole fucking world at this point. So well, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. This might be actually. Uh, I could probably say it. Unpress. A good friend of ours is starting a new platform called Unpress dot news. Unpress dot news. Um, and it's a free speech platform, and it's meant to be more journalist-based, like legitimate content mm -hmm. uh, from people who are trusted sources. So okay. might be worth checking out. Well, yeah, Definitely hopefully check it, goes it out. Well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. This has been Erica with Generally Irritable at MindsFest. Destiny, thank you for taking some time to talk to us, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah.